What's up guys, welcome back to today's video. Today, we're getting cooling upgrades. So I think in the video that went live yesterday, I didn't do a perfect job explaining the Civic. So I said the EG was going to be a dedicated track and autocross car and the Evo would remain a street car and the canyon car, whatever, meat car. What I meant to add to that statement was I still want to track the Evo, just not as often as the Civic. Like I totally see myself doing two, three, maybe four track days a year with the Evo still because yeah, it's just, it's just good on the track. So on the subject of track preparation for the Evo, I have a Koyo radiator to install today and for the actual coolant inside. I'm going to be switching it over to distilled water with Redline Water Wetter. Also going to be on the lookout today because my custom coilovers that took I think 11 weeks to actually come are finally out for delivery today. So I'm so excited for that. Literally, it's going to be game changing for this car. And last night I went on YouTube to see if there are any other like radiator installs for the Evo 10. Mishimoto has two and Rally Sport Direct had one. So I think I'm the first consumer to install a radiator and throw it on YouTube. So that's cool. So once you have all of the easy to access bolts off of the radiator support, there are some hidden ones. Now as far as I know, I do have to remove these 10 mils underneath the hood latch. There are, there's one uh, by the headlight bracket down in that corner. And same thing on this side. Basically anything that obviously bolts to the radiator support needs to be pulled out because this entire piece uh, actually needs to come up and off the car. So the bolts underneath the hood latch are definitely hard to get to, but I'm able to fit a quarter inch ratchet with a 10 mil and a little extension, and I've been able to get all three of them off. And so yeah, you do need to actually take out these 10 mils, there's one on each side that's next to the headlight underneath like the bumper bracket. Uh, to get that out, I was able to use a quarter inch ratchet with a 10 mil with no extension, and it fits in there perfectly, and you can move this out of the way because it does have flex once you take the 10 mil off holding the bracket down. Got the radiator support off. It's actually not too bad. I did leave the hood latch attached, so I just have it pushed up and out of the way. There are a few 12 millimeter nuts as well that hold on sensors that you need to take off. And there are a few um, harnesses and you need to push through the plastic clips that are like hanging out of here, just so you can get enough play to move the support out of the way. One other tip I have for you guys is to tape up your intercooler piping or at least the, the coupler. If something falls in there, you're gonna be having a bad time because now you have to take the front bumper and the intercooler out if you can even get it out because it's pretty complicated and not fun to deal with anything that falls through into that hole. Uh, I was just checking my email and the autocross event that I was supposed to go to on Saturday with the 10th gen SI just got canceled. So I don't know, I guess that gives me more time to prep the EG so that the next event in August, I can bring that car hopefully. So to drain the OEM radiator, I need to loosen the peacock on the factory one, which is up there. It's just a little like nut that you twist off by hand, but I don't want to pull off my splitter or my under tray because I don't want to get deeper in the car and make more work. So I'm going to put the drain or the drain pan here and I'm going to jack it, the splitter up with the jack to support the weight of the coolant as it drains into that. So I can't get really on camera, but this is how I'm doing it without pulling off my whole under tray. So I'm gonna loosen that up and it's gonna start draining into the plug. And then when that's happening, I'm gonna jack this up so it doesn't put like a lot of stress on the flat bottom because it's barely held on by any bolts that are deeper on the car right now. So 
so that did not go as planned. Everything kind of just exploded out of the radiator. But yeah, I've got everything cleaned up with a hose and I'm gonna let it dry. And as it finishes draining, uh, I will come back to this and then I'll be able to disconnect the hoses and pull the radiator out. baby stay tuned for this so i currently have the radiator loose from the car the only issue that i'm running into is the lower radiator hose it is just from the factory or i don't know if someone messed with it in since then but the clamp is not in a good orientation where i can easily put pliers on it and it's not easy to get to at all it's blocked by the intercooler the intercooler piping the front bumper uh, yeah, I can't reach it from the top because of all the like wiring and hoses that are blocking it, so it's just not fun. So I was tired of wrestling that clamp, so I figured it was easier to just take the front bumper off. So now I just have direct access to it right here. I got the fans off the factory radiator and I measured it. It's actually a coil unit too, which I didn't know. But yeah, this is one inch thick. And then the new one over here, this is like a work of art with the aluminum intakes and everything. But this is a hair under an inch and a half in thickness. So almost a half inch thicker and should have more water capacity as well. Damn, this thing just looks so nice. <laughs> Look at those welds. So we have the Koyo radiator all set up with the factory fan shroud. Everything fit perfectly. The only thing I noticed was that the coolant, I'm pretty sure this is for a coolant temp sensor. This was a little loose, so I just tightened that with a wrench. Then the other one for draining the radiator was a little loose as well. So if you guys are getting this, just make sure you check that before you put it in. It's a lot easier to do when the radiator is outside the car. Okay, I got the whole cooling system buttoned up now and I dumped out the excess in the reservoir. So I'm gonna start filling it up with distilled water and then bleeding the system. All right, the car is now buttoned up and 100% good to go. The only issue that I ran into actually was on the hose that goes from the radiator neck over to your overflow tank. I discovered mine actually on one of the sides had a little slit in it right there. Yeah, other than that, everything else was good, so I just replaced that. Thankfully, I had, um, I believe it was 930 second hose that I used. I had it on hand. So yeah, I was able to get that replaced. It just runs from that to a hard line. I'm sorry, I actually did not replace that one. It, that one was good. It was the one that goes from the hard line to the neck. Uh, underneath the intercooler piping. I'll go through these coils at a later date when we're actually installing them, but I just wanted to check them out and give you guys a little bit of a preview as well. So these are the Fortunato 510s, which is like their higher end model. Uh, they are custom to me with 11K springs, Swiss springs, then a bunch of other upgrades. I would have to go through the list on the email. Uh, DSG Performance, and I believe they're in Canada, they're actually the ones that helped me out with this order and like advised me on what I should get for my Evo. Ooh. Jesus Christ, these are so nice. So yeah, this is one of the front coils. Swift, Swift Springs 11. I am actually really curious to see how much weight these will save off the front end, front end of the Evo. Cause yeah, these are so light. Is that the TikTok thing? Yeah. Where you just like whack them? Yeah. <laughs> 